Welcome back to what we call Pastor Talks here at the Christian Church of Loudoun County. Uh, what I do during this time is I share in my personal devotion time in the hopes that it encourages you in your walk. And with that encouragement, our prayer uh, as a leadership team is that you would then go and encourage others. And we are currently in what you might call Holy Week, and the week that leads up to Easter. Uh, and during this time, the church is fixated on the cross on the journey that Jesus took and on all the things that led to ultimately what we claim in his name through the victory on the cross. Today, I want to take time and I want us to reflect together on the question, are we ready for resurrection? Resurrection is what we celebrate on Easter. And so as we reflect on that reality, it is a question that we have to ask ourselves. Are we ready for that? I'm just going to be reading out of uh, John chapter 11 today, just bits and pieces. There's this really pivotal moment in his ministry where Jesus does something miraculous in a man's life. And this moment kind of propels him forward towards the cross. And so it's in this moment that we really get to see Jesus shine his brightest. In John chapter 11, we get a picture of uh, why Jesus is doing what he's doing when he's doing it. In verse one, it says, now a certain man was ill, Lazarus of Bethany, in the village of Mary and her sister, Martha. It was Mary who anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was ill. So Mary is, uh, is one that finds herself multiple times in the Gospels. She is the one that breaks the, the ointment and anoints Jesus before his burial. Uh, she takes very expensive perfume and, and pours it over him. And the disciples rebuke her for that. The same Mary is the one that sits at the feet of Jesus and her sister Martha yells at her and says that she's not helping to take care of the people that are in the house. Jesus says that what she's doing is good. So this character and her sister are both very important to Jesus. He spends a lot of time with them. We find out that her brother is ill and they send for him. It says, uh, after this, he said to his disciples, let us go to Judea. And the disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews are just now seeking to stone you. Are we going to go there again? Verse 9, Jesus answered, are there not 12 hours in the day? If anyone walks in the day, he does not stumble because he sees the light of this world. But if anyone walks in the night, he stumbles because the light is not in him. Jesus is doing what he's doing at the time that he's doing it because he wants us to see the light. The disciples are scared, rightly so. They see their life being in danger and they don't really want to go back to the place where they just recently had threatened to be stoned to death. So Jesus explains to them that while I am here, I'm going to shine the light, the light of the kingdom, the light of the gospel, the light of the good news. He is the light. And as we come to see, as this story unfolds, he's also the resurrection that we're talking about, that we're trying to ask ourselves, are we ready for that? So the disciples want to know why they're going back to this place where they're going to be stoned, potentially. And Jesus says that their friend... Lazarus has fallen asleep. And they said, well, if he's fallen asleep, he's going to recover. Jesus says this. Then Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus has died. And for your sake, I am glad that I was not there so that you may believe, but let us go to him. <laughs> so Thomas called the twin said to his fellow disciples, let us also go that we may die with him. I don't know if they fully understand what they're saying. Jesus is 
um, taking an opportunity to show the full power that comes through being God manifest in the flesh, incarnation. The disciples are clueless. Uh, if he's falling asleep, he'll wake back up. But, but no, oh, he's dead. Well, let's go die with him. Let us also die. I think sometimes we throw things out. Sometimes we don't really think about what they mean. Things like take up your cross and follow me. Phrases that we see in the New Testament, like it's no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. Do we mean those words? Are we ready for death, the death of self? Are we ready for the resurrection of life, coming into new life, new birth, letting the Spirit do the work that only the Spirit can do? Jesus comes before the family that is losing their brother, and he sees them in distress. Jesus is talking to one of the sisters. He says, Jesus says to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know he'll rise again, the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he die yet, he shall live. And everyone who lives and believes in me, lives and believes in me, shall never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, the son of God who's coming into the world. I am the resurrection. I am the life. Whoever lives in me and whoever believes in me never dies. So this resurrection is not something that we have to wait for the end of days, the, the end of time. We don't have to wait until we die to experience resurrection because we can take in the fullness of being resurrected in the victory of Jesus today. We can live that. You have an opportunity to do that this week during Holy Week as we prepare ourselves for Easter, as we look to invite others into community, letting ourselves die and letting the resurrection that comes from the victory of Christ come through us is something that we have an opportunity to do today, tomorrow, the next day. You can choose to be alive again in Jesus. Now, Jesus has affection for this family and cares deeply for them in the way that he cares deeply for you. And he sees you in your distress in the same way that he sees this family in distress. Verse 33 says, when Jesus saw her, and that's the sister weeping, the Jews who had come with her also weeping, he was deeply moved in his spirit and greatly troubled. And he said, where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. A very profound verse, 35 of chapter 11, Jesus wept. Father of the universe, all-powerful, all-seeing, able to resurrect the dead, weeps for the loss of someone's brother. So the Jews said, see how he loved him. But some of them said, how could he, who opened the eyes of the blind, have also kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, deeply moved again, came into the tomb. It was a cave, and the stone lay against it. Jesus is weeping with this family in their mourning. And some of the people say, oh, look how much he loved this man. And the other people in the crowd will if this man could heal the eyes of the blind, why didn't he come and stop this man from dying? Why didn't he come sooner? We see him deeply troubled once because of the hurt of the, the people in the family. We see him deeply troubled again at the words of discouragement that say, well, he didn't do enough. 
And I don't think anyone in this situation is fully aware of what's about to happen. This is a man that is dead. He's been in the tomb three days. They warn him about the stench. This is a passage that I encourage you to go back today and read the fullness of, to really immerse yourself in this situation and see what Jesus does here. Because what he's doing is he's giving us a reflection of ourselves. The disciples are like, oh, yeah, I want to die. Let's go die, Lazarus. And the sisters don't realize what Jesus is fully capable of. And the people of the town think that he just is lazy and he didn't get there soon enough. All of this, all of this is something that we can individually reflect on and ask ourselves, are we we ready? How can we be ready? How can we prepare our hearts for resurrection? For Resurrection Sunday, for Resurrection Wednesday, for Resurrection Thursday, how can we prepare ourselves for letting God bring to us new life? Jesus says to the sister, did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? Just believe, have faith that God can move in your life in the ways that you need him to, that God can move in the person of your life, family member, coworker, person in your neighborhood, that God is capable of moving in their life. Believe in that, take steps towards that, whether that be an invitation, whether that be an encouragement, whether it just be a conversation, Believe that God can do that through you. Believe that he listens to you. And because it's so important to Jesus that we recognize that the heavenly father is listening, he prays this prayer out loud before the people that are there. He says this. So they took away the stone. Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you always hear me. But I said this on account of the people standing around that they may believe that you sent me. When he said these things, he cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. And the man that was dead is alive. And the people that disbelieved in Jesus are renewed. And the people that are in mourning take their mourning and they turn it into joy. So they receive their brother again. And the disciples who said they wanted to die with Lazarus now see and they believe that Jesus is all that he said that he is. And so today, that's what I ask you to do. I don't know if you find yourself in a, in a dead place or you find yourself in a disbelieving place or you find yourself in a mourning place or you're, you're just ignorant and, and you're overconfident or, or whatever it is in your life. Are you preparing yourself for resurrection today? To let yourself take in the fullness of what Jesus accomplished. That takes personal steps to believe. Reflect on that today. Do I I believe that you are capable of moving in my life in this situation? Whether that be an emotional thing or a financial thing or a medical thing, do I believe that Jesus can resurrect this? And then if we do, then what kind of steps are we taking in order to resurrect that thing? read scripture, pray to him, come and sit in his presence, listen to him. This week, we're practicing a spiritual discipline called Slow Down. And it's at our church's website, cclctn.com. Up at the top, it just says, Reflecting Jesus. Click on that. It'll take you straight to where we post those things. I encourage you to slow down this week, to sit with him, to listen to him, to believe and have faith that he can do what he said that he can do, that he can move through you in ways that you could never imagine. And so this week, walk resurrected by the power of Jesus. 
I'm going to pray over you, and I hope the rest of your day is blessed. Father, thank you for all that you do in our life, for all of the ways that you are regularly resurrecting us out of the dead places, out of the unbelieving places, out of the dark places, out of our arrogant places, into humility, into faith, into belief, into life, into light. So, Father, I pray over these people that you would encourage them, that you would give them confidence, that you would give them life, that you would give them belief and faith in you and in you alone. Thank you so much for Jesus who makes this all possible. Thank you for the life and the faith that we claim in his name. It is all because of you. And so it is in your name that we pray. Amen.